what happened exactly without because it's somewhat of a sensitive topic um on on youtube and things like that but you were in a contest and then it was someone that was a transgender woman who was a biological man competed in the contest mm -hmm. and won first place that's right i got second place and then what what happened well i didn't speak up about it right away because i didn't know how to handle it and i didn't want to I want to just enjoy the contest and skate like normal and I tried to just be a good sport about it but the more that I thought about it the more I realized how unfair it was and how wrong it was and I thought I should reach out to Red Bull so I emailed Eric at Red Bull and it was it was a polite email I just said hey I have some concerns about this being unfair I'm not sure if you're the right person to talk to about it, but I'm sure you can direct me to the right person. And we'd emailed before. He'd always got back to me. It wasn't like I just like emailed customer service and <laughs> and like hoped I would hear something. Hope that it's in one of the cars with a big Red Bull can on top to pick you up. Right. Yeah. No, it was like the guy who was organizing all the stuff for um, the contest after I had qualified in Michigan. And he just never responded. So for a while, I just tried to ignore it. And I had shared the story of what had happened with I'd say hundreds of skaters because it had been like four or five months and everybody was just like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry that happened. And seeing everyone's reaction to it kind of validated the way I was feeling. And I started to feel really guilty for not speaking up because I had seen other women speak up in other sports. And I knew this happened in skateboarding more than just the one time it happened to me. It happened to me prior and I was seeing it happen in other contests too. So I felt guilty because I knew that being in second place and there having been money involved, this is the type of story people would listen to. And I did not expect it to blow up the way that it did. I thought it would cause some local outrage and at least get a conversation started since obviously emailing Red Bull wasn't a way to start a conversation about it. They did not want to have that conversation at all. But um, yeah, it went viral. Do you, and Do you think that um, like moms are like behind you oh like, i get messages from parents all the time there are so many parents who are concerned about their kids and they have young kids and they're concerned that they're never going to get a fair opportunity in sport or might not even want to go try out for a team if they're to face this you think there's any value to having like um a league a league where anyone can compete men and women this is ridiculous for like money an open league no, no, no. an open league that's not right I, I don't think that's like a ridiculous idea. I think that in some sports, perhaps it could work. But I don't think that it should be at the cost of the female division. I think it's important for there to be a female division. So why, why aren't more people speaking out? Because they're scared because they saw what happened to me on the internet. But what? You got like a job and you're traveling. Yeah. Around, hello, people. Places. Like the people who hate comment on my page. I don't know them. They don't affect my life at all. I've been traveling the world. I got a new job. I'm skating literally as part of my job. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. We got a bunch of skate projects. Well, so so full disclosure for people listening, you know, we want to do a skate shop. We want to do contests. We want to do community events. And I was just like, we need someone who's into that stuff to like help make that happen. So, you know, Taylor's going to be working on a lot of that stuff aside from just being in the vlog or whatever. You yeah, beat and Tim so, in a game of skate, is that? I, I've beat Tim in a bunch of game of skate, but the thing is, is he'll only allow a camera in if he's already up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so every time you see it on we video, gotta I Red lose. Bull about that. <laughs> he'll like invite Nick down as soon as he's got me to <laughs> tee. Like, yeah, like, hold on, hold on, let me. Something I, I but, never invited anybody it's to film a handicap, when we were right? skating. But I really want people to understand that if you speak up about this, you will get support. There's yeah. a lot of people who support you, and there might be a bit of an attack on the internet at first. And depending on where you live, people in your community might treat you like garbage. But do you want to like sit around pretending that you agree with them, or would you rather stand up for what's right? Well, I can answer it's that. It's really hard for me to sit around and act like it was okay. I never saw you respond out of anger at, uh, to people. I never saw you like demean other people. I've only heard you talk about it in that well, how you feel about what happened. From the beginning, I said I, I don't want people to go attack anyone. I think that the people who are responsible are the contest organizers who allow it to happen because the reality is all the athletes competing are just going by the rules. And I think that we just have to have an honest conversation about women deserving a fair space and what can we do to create a solution that everyone's happy with because what's happening now is not fair. And there's a lot of people who are upset about it. I wouldn't, my story wouldn't have blown up if there weren't people all over the world who are, who are concerned about 
what's going to happen to women's sports if this continues. Well, Taylor, when you said you can sit around and ignore it, I was like, oh, that's what I did. Like, I remember when these... I would not consider myself by any means transphobic or anti-trans in the slightest. And I would actually, I would tell people on the left who don't want to speak up about these issues that you really should speak up about these issues because when an issue on the left gets pushed so far over the edge, where we're talking about surgery to kids, where we're talking about um, women not being able to compete in sports, stuff like that, right? By not talking about it, what you're essentially doing is you're taking the most extreme version and now that's what people think all trans people are, right? All trans people are trying to, you know, uh, uh, cut off your kid's private parts and then take your girl's gold medal in track and field or whatever. And it's pushing more and more people to the right because I remember there would be stories about I think when I was still doing a progressive show is when Fallon Fox, the transgender MMA fighter, was just schooling women. School and That's I look uh, uh, beating beating the hell out of breaking women. breaking their skulls. Yeah, women. and I didn't want to cover it because I I knew that I would get in trouble. But also as like an MMA fighter, I was like, I don't think this is right. And then I would feel bad because I'm like, but I'm just a I'm just a straight cis guy. I can't comment on it. And That's we just creepy. Shit. And we, yeah, and we just wouldn't talk about it. And I I didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. And so but, but, I felt but just, bad that, not that saying something. Right, that thought right there that you would be like, this seems wrong, but then divert to, but I'm a straight white man. Well, so. yeah, man. I mean, when you're, first of all, and we can get we can get vulnerable and not funny at all, where one, like I have crippling depression and anxiety. And if I'm surrounded by, and I'm sure a lot of people listening have felt this, if you're surrounded by people who will belittle you because of those things... Of course you're going to think that. It's already a cult mentality on top of me hating myself and having imposter syndrome with whatever I do. On top of the fact that, yeah, I am kind of like the enemy in that terrain. If someone just goes, you're speaking from privilege and my default is to be down on myself anyway, of course I'm going to be like, okay, I guess I just like shouldn't talk about it. Interesting. This is, this is The interesting thing here between the two of you is that Taylor – looked into the fire and just decided one day to just jump through it. They grabbed you and threw you through it. They sure did. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, we're going to burn them on the fire. You're like, wait, <laughs> it's not so much of a fire as I thought it would. They thought they were putting you on yeah, the fire. See, and you're like, wait, right. I can see through well, it. And I don't feel like it was so much a choice for me either, because at a certain point I felt like I had to do something. And I was well, really frustrated. But you still walked really on your own. You, when you, I, you I, I was escorted. <laughs> <laughs> what was the point? Escort this man through the what, fire. Please. What was the moment when you realized? <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I think I felt, it's hard to say because I had a lot of friends who are very supportive of me, including like mentors who have been around throughout the years of me skateboarding. And I just felt like I needed to do the right thing. And I knew that people would come after me. I knew that people would come after me for being Jewish, being in Israel, but also being in Israel, I felt really safe. I knew that there wasn't gonna be an angry mob with pitchforks outside of my house. No one was gonna attack me at the skate park. Although I did have the experience where the, the guy I was renting from, the day after I went on Piers Morgan, he like asked me to leave. And I talked to him and I think it was a misunderstanding, plus there was a language barrier. But um, that was kind of scary. I thought for a second I messed my life up. I'm never going to be able to stay anywhere. But you communicated someone, with him and Everything resolved. was fine. Yeah, everything I, was totally I, fine I and we someone, were cool after. I had someone throw me in a skate park. Yeah, I haven't yeah. had that happen at all in real life. I get threats online all day, but I'm sure it could happen. Uh, that's very poignant that you mentioned that it, communication with the person that had misunderstood something they saw you in. Yeah, but I actually, I don't even know if he saw me or if he was just like, why is this woman bringing a camera crew into the place I'm renting to her? I'm not part of this, but everything was fine. And I've been, I've gotten only support in real life. Like it's been the opposite of getting threatened at the skate park. I like go to a skate park in Indiana and everyone was high-fiving me, excited I was there. Well, and what's really cool about shows like this i think is that you know for a little while your only option if you were thrown into the fire by the left was to go full right wing and that's what i refused to do even when i was broke and in like a ratty apartment infested with fleas like i did not want to do that what's really cool about spaces like this is it 
you just feel safe. You just feel safe to figure out how you feel and to evolve and to ask questions. And it doesn't mean suddenly, okay, now I'm alt right. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, now I'm now I'm a Bernie bro. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, I'll be a centrist dem. Um, you don't have to do that. You all of us listening should be allowed to evolve opinions without being called a grifter should be allowed to agree with a conservative thing here a liberal thing here a progressive thing here um without having to like you were talking about before ian subscribe to a a team because for the Mm -hmm. most part if you find a team you line up with entirely on every single issue you're probably lying is what I found. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Come hang out live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Super chat. We'll even answer some of your questions. If you want to check out the After Hours Censored Show, go to TimCast.com and become a member. We put those up Monday through Thursday at 11 p.m. They're very funny, not very family friendly. We'll love to see you there. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.